Okay, everyone, um, thank you for coming. This is our session with Deloitte. Um, they're going to be speaking uh, about some developments uh, and, uh, and their platform. Um, I know it's earlier than uh, some of you uh, expect, uh, considering that you might be in vacation, but uh, I'm sure that you'll get something very, very valuable of this, out of this session. Uh, so thank you very much for coming. Now I'll let our guests uh, take the mic and uh, go for it. All right, friends. Hi, everyone. Um, it's Benny here. So I'll uh, introduce myself a little bit. So I'm uh, actually I'm a uh, service now practice leader in Deloitte. So basically, I have been like delivering and also like crafting out all kind of customer experience. How we can like uh, providing a, a service excellence as well as um, using different technologies to actually giving the impact uh, to the world. As you guys may see um, on the very first uh, opening, right? So we see a couple of the videos that we actually um, proposing and actually make it into the community. Basically, it's actually coming from our team here. So today, what I'm going to share with you guys is um, one of the problem statements that you guys have, right? About the uh, smart, city, smart cities, right? So what are we going to do? Do in smart city, how are we going to give impact uh, to the society? Not only from a technology perspective, is how we can bring in uh, what we always call creative innovations, as well as some what we call the human centric design into the um, smart city environments. All right. So without further delay, uh, can we actually like um, start it? So today agenda, as I said, right. So we are going to start with. Um, meeting the Deloitte Digital, um, so where we actually come from, and then we actually talk about a little bit on um, what we see, how we actually see the smart city, and what kind of elements that actually build uh, and actually compiles the whole smart city things. And then follow up, and then we can have something called a common issue addressed by how service now can actually help to build a smart cities. So we have a couple of different examples, um, not only in Hong Kong or in um, the Asian uh, countries, we also have something coming from the US, coming from the Japan and all other countries. And then um, lastly, I mean, I will have some time for you guys to do a Q&A. Hopefully like I can give you some uh, input and then also helping you guys to shape out uh, your ideas and your proposal for your first round of um, submissions. All right. So uh, to start with, right, um, Deloitte Digital. So what kind of, uh, what is Deloitte Digital is, right? So Deloitte Digital basically we compose um, three different things together. So the first thing is we always are uh, starting off everything from strategies, right? So nothing can be done without planning, right? So we always talk about, you always think about like Deloitte as a um, management consultant. We always do like a strategy. We always do um, paper. We actually sitting in, in front of uh, the computer making PowerPoints. But, uh, but I can tell you that not exactly the things that we do day to day. I mean, of course we do PowerPoints, but we are not just doing PowerPoints and then just thinking um, the strategy from a 10,000 square feet um, above the sky, right? So basically what we also do is from a strategy, we actually bring in our creative as well as our technologies um, elements into the what we call the, the new generation of digital uh, strategies. So what does that mean is like the new digital strategy that we actually do is we actually using um, customers, we actually using the citizen as our core component and then think about how we can relate technologies and creative into um, a day-to-day -day life of a customers, of a um, citizen, or even like if you think about in the company that how we can actually do things for our employees. So that's why you can see we have all kind of customer loyalty, enterprise cloud, uh, creative design, everything is actually coming from the core of human. And human-centric is basically what we actually talking about in the law digital all the time, right? So next one, uh, not going to talk too much, but uh, just just you may want to see like service now, friends service now for uh, sponsoring for this uh, event. Oh, sorry, uh, yeah, you can can you um, go on the next page? Oh, sorry, you can can you flip on the uh, next page here? 
So what we actually see is, yeah, probably. So what we actually see, um, service side is actually sponsoring for this um event, right? So basically, what I was so, oh, the, are we losing her, or should we just sharing the screen? Can you guys see a still see a screen? I think the screen share stopped. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Maybe I just share it off of mine, right? So. You guys will see my screen, right? Yes. All right, sounds good. All right, so what happened is, uh, so fans for fans for service now like uh, sponsoring the um the event. So basically, the reason why we have a um uh, partnership with service now because not only because I like, we actually working um and then we actually trust service now as a technologies, but we also are working service now hand in hand. And then you can also see most of the customers in Hong Kong is actually um, based on the service now technologies and the Deloitte customers in this case, right? So without further delay, right? Um, so what is smart city, right? So I want to give you guys probably like 10 seconds to think about um, what is the smart city that actually in your mind? Um, are we talking about just the technologies? Are we talking about like all kind of like a green trees you, you actually see in uh, Singapore or like a really, really advanced, um, like a things that you see in, in China, in US. So try to make up your mind and think about what is the smart city. is a city. This is a smart city. Sensors gather real-time data on energy usage and asset performance throughout the city. Data monitoring and predictive analytics enable dynamic operations, reducing consumption and triggering maintenance before downtime occurs. Using real-time data, an integrated mobility system moves people and goods efficiently with options that are fast, affordable, clean, and safe. attracts residents, visitors, and businesses, stimulating growth and optimizing use of city assets and infrastructure. <sighs> Using new engagement channels and innovative technologies, residents can easily and securely interact with their city government, requesting services, paying for utilities, and helping co-create solutions to city challenges. Digital and connected services provide a better user experience, streamline city operations, collect accurate information for decision makers, and create opportunities for residents to engage in city planning. communication pushes important location-based information to residents and visitors on the go, including updates on road hazards, nearby events, and local landmarks. Tailored communication keeps residents and visitors informed and engaged, improving quality of life and satisfaction. This is a smart city. New ideas and new technology make it more innovative, efficient, economically competitive, environmentally responsible, inclusive, and more livable. How smart is your city? So, yeah, so what kind of like a smart city uh, elements that you guys may think in your mind? 
integrity, um, smart data, everything, right? So many, many different buzzwords that we actually see. But uh, what I want to bring it out here from the video, it's not like all kind of fancy things that you only see uh, in the service, right? So basically, uh, similar to what you see in Google. Google is not just like only one page and then uh, you can fill in whatever keywords and then they will give you a result, right? There is so many things that under the hood that actually build and also like um, become, make Google become the best uh, search engine into the, in the world, right? So if you look at the smart city itself, so of course smart city is actually composing with uh, data and security. So data security, uh, data and security is always like the key things. So that's why uh, we all, when you actually think about now we have many uh, kind of like a um, uh, broad chain technologies. Now we have many like a distributed um, data database uh, things and, and then everything that is actually helping out to having our city to actually manage and verify all kind of uh, data in a very secure manner. The second thing is uh, we always talk about will be like the ecosystems. So there's no company in the world can actually uh, do everything you know, to, actually, uh, to actually form a smart cities. So as little as a very tiny IoT sensor, all the way to kind of like a um, data platforms, to a data to a AI engines, all the way to maybe um, a, a bigger say uh, airport itself, so everything is actually combining different, many different components. So if you want to think about the smart city, you have to think about uh, what will be the ecosystem partners that actually work in this space. So for example, so I service now is one of the top um, ecosystem partners that actually do uh, the smart cities. Later on, you will see um, not only in Hong Kong airport, um, and then also in like an MTR as well as uh, some some business park like the science park, uh, cyberport, they all actually using service now to facilitate their business. So, so those kind of business is actually helping Hong Kong to become the one of the best uh, smart city in the in the region as well, right? So I talk about two things, right? So data's ecosystem is all about technologies, right? But the next things that I want to talk about is more from the internal organizations. So it's more like a people. People like, uh, are we ready or what kind of like a mindset of people that can adopt the smart cities? So we can actually do it in a couple of different ways, right? So we, when you actually think about your new smart city solutions, you also need to consider how we can convince um, the leadership, how we can convince uh, people who actually trust your solution is actually helping them, actually giving them a better life. So for example, right? So Autopass, Autopass uh, card in Hong Kong, right? So 20 years ago, it was like really, really best technology, cutting edge technology at that time, right? But um, nowadays, like 20 years after, in Hong Kong, you still see like they have 80% of people using Autopass card in the recent um, like a company, I mean the uh, government coupon screen. Uh, why people are still picking up Autobus as their first thing? Not because Autobus is the first, is the advanced technology nowadays, right? So we have many we WeChat Pay, we have Alipay, we have all other fancy technologies. But just because like people are so adopted to Autobus, so that's why they actually choose the things that they feeling more comfortable. And when you actually design your own solutions, when you're actually thinking about your own project. You need to think about how we can make people adopt your things. So it's not like um, I always use that. Another thing that you can also consider is like uh, when you actually have people adopting your technologies, um, what will be kind of like the learning curve that you guys have? Think about like uh, the last time when you teach your mom to use iPhone. So you will see how difficult it is to have people adopting so called the uh, intuitive. Um, technologies in, in nowadays, right? Okay, so then the next one that I want to talk about is uh, the digital and technology itself. So when we're actually talking about like a uh, digital technology, so it, it's basically talking about how we can make things more innovative. So smart city is not like a new thing, right? It, technology and it's not a new thing either. 
but so technology has been like happening uh, in, in, in the city for over 30 years, 40 years. So how can we actually take the old things and then we package it and then make it a more innovative uh, and then transform it into a better way that will in involve in the creativities and also innovations. So a very good example that you, you guys always see nowadays is, um, is, is, the, is the electronic car, right? So it's the EV. So EV concept is not it's nothing new, right? Tesla is not like the company who make to the, who make the first uh, EV in the city, right? But uh, what Tesla actually excel from other company can actually make it become the best one uh, right now at this moment is how they actually uh, decide the EV that is actually coming with uh, all kind of like innovative features. So things like you can have a kind of like a really fast charging a uh, really fast convenience way to actually refill uh, your battery and then you can in your car you can have your dog mode you can have your uh, camping mode so basically they brand in the technology into your life using a very simple uh, and but yet it's an innovative way to actually sell you they're not selling you as a car but selling you as a partner that can help you to live your day-to-day -day life so that is actually one of the key um, points when you think about how we can continuously um, innovate something that already exists in the city and make it the better things using the, the uh, digital and technologies. And then um, next one, we always talk about like finance and funding. So nothing can be done without um, without funding, right? So you and I also living in the world that we still need to use um, the currency to actually support our day-to-day -day life, right? We need to pay for our bills, we need to pay for our rent, we need to pay for our food, right? So basically your solutions will not find without a proper finance planning. So basically, so once you have a very good ideas, once you have a very good way to actually adopting people to use it, a very good storyline, the next thing that you always want to do is you have to build out a sound business model. So the sound business model is not like oh I can throw in um hundred thousand diff uh money uh dollars into the campaign and then have people using it and then uh then it will become a successful stories right so if we actually evaluate a new business uh ideas or new business proposal we always talk about how we can make sure that your cash flow will actually make you success so. Even though sometimes you want to make a huge uh, investment up front, but then um, if you cannot find a sustainable work, um, cash flow uh, when you actually develop the whole project, the whole things will not be success. So when you think about like the funding, financial things, you have to think about how you can consistently um, make your cash flow more sustainable. So it's, it's the way how you can like, start, like, start small and then scale up or like you can like uh, using like a cold crowdsourcing or cold delivery model so that you can have something uh, to have at least something, some income, some of the uh, things that you can make money on and then use those money to fetch it fund your um, R&D process so that you can make it as a more like a foundry mode. So think about like um, even like a, a big company like Apple, right? When they first launched their iPhone in uh, 20 years ago, so it's not like a perfect iPhone. And they're not either like following out every single features that you will see on your iPhone in, in, the, in, in their first iPhones. So they're always starting small, starting like a minimal viable product, so MVP, so that uh, they can test the market, then they will target where the market will actually tell them, and um, are you doing the wrong thing? Are you doing the right thing? And then use that market funding in order to sustain and make it to your second generations and the third generations. So iPhone 13 is not like a day one. It's not like a 13 month project. It's kind of like a 13 years project. So something like that is you have to like bear in mind and think about how we can uh, make your project sound. I mean, I know in your submissions, um, you're not going to uh, make it as a real business but at least in your proposal you should stay it on what is your financial planning how do you actually get funding and how will be the cash flow that can support your ideas and then lastly of course like we all living in a regulatory world right nothing can be done without 
combine snow and regulations. So policy regulations is always kind of things that you always want to check. Um, things like privacy, um, privacy law, and then you always want to check if uh, if the city that you actually do is actually allowing to facilitate your own um, innovation and ideas. And then also, uh, not to mention like a very critical elements will be always like a data. So different company, I mean, different country actually has their own set of uh, data compliance rules. So you may, you may want to think about how you can deal with that, uh, especially when you're using a cloud solution like ServiceNow. Uh, they are not like the traditional things that you, where you can always host your data within your country or in one single location. Once you actually put data on the cloud, the, those data will be like uh, being stored, distributed in uh, multi different countries or different locations. So when you think about your ideas, how are you going to tackle this kind of data privacy things? How you guys is going to take advantage of um, the green tax or something like a um, smart city credit? So those will be kind of the things that will also um, make your solution like shine in kind of like the, in these competitions. And then, I mean, I like the ideas and then it will automatically add some points if you have already considered uh, the privacy and also uh, compliance as well as all other laws related regulatory requirements. Okay, so um, next things, right? So once now you have already know what kind of um, smart city or what kind of like a common issue or, or kind of like a pin for that I always see in the smart city. The next one that you always, uh, I don't want to share with you is uh, what will be kind of like those common issues. How are we going to address this, those common issues with ServiceNow? So ServiceNow, again, if you guys see um, from their webpage, um, they're not just the IT service management tools. So don't get them confused you on that. ServiceNow is much more than how they can connect human together and then bond the service, which is the most core elements that actually bond us, uh, bond all the human uh, into the world, make the world better, right? So how does it work is like, so think about like all the human, um, like you and me, or even though like um, a, a, a taxi drivers that actually, um, you, you just uh, send you from one place to another place, right? They're all human that you interact with them in day-to-day -day basis, right? But you don't even know him and he don't even know you either. Right? But you guys have certain kind of bonding. Even though some bonding can be like as little as a couple of seconds, that is kind of like you, you just say hi and then they, a, a gentleman just open a door for you, hold a door for you in a shopping mall. Or even though some kind of like a long term relationship that you actually build with your friends, your boss, um, or all others. So if you look at those relationship, so surface which means that i'm helping you to do something or you are asking me to help to do something is kind of like the core foundations of those relationships and service now is actually aiming to resolve this kind of request and also fulfill those relationships here so that's why um one of the things when you think about the smart cities right uh, smart cities is all about data surveys how we can help a human to achieve uh, living better. So service now is kind of like a under the hood engine to actually help you to drive this kind of service relationship uh, that you can do in the smart cities. So that's why um, when you actually think about, again, think about your solutions, when you think about uh, your smart city solutions, um, instead of like going all the way through like a tech savvy, you make like your AI, um, uh, drone <laughs> driven like a um, CCTV systems think about like humans what kind of things that a citizen can really need what kind of services they can need and how can they acquire services with um with their most comfortable again comfortable but not high that right comfortable way um using service now technologies and then service now can actually bridge the gap on that so that will be the, the, the things that you always want to see how you can leverage service now to do that. And of course, like you can see on the side, right? All kind of like quality and agility, uh, minimal downtime for customers, all kind of things. I, I, I won't say they are not important, but they are more like the foundational things. So 
if I if I want you to actually think about the smart city, if I want to want you to think about service now, that is how we can bond people together using technologies. That will be the whole things about service now. Okay. So if we actually move on to um the human experience, right? So one of the use case that global use cases that you you will see is uh in Japan, right? So one of the, my favorite uh countries, right? Although like they're locking down for over the past two years, and uh hopefully right we can like get in, uh in next month, right? So one of the uh city uh in in the um western part of uh Japan is actually using service now to connect their citizen uh with the with the small town governments so basically um you can always see uh if you talk if you're living in a large, large city right living in hong kong living in like tokyo living in seoul so those government has actually unlimited almost like unlimited amount of project to actually build a so-called smart citizen um uh, platforms right they can spend like um thousands of million dollars to actually building up a very clumsy e-government platforms right but if you think about like these small cities like us like singapore like a, this kind of a small city in in japan or like a small city council they don't have this kind of budget and they also want to have something building really quick direct easy to use things for their citizen people who only have only five fifty thousand um citizen uh into the city so they will use service now so they actually using service now to actually build out a what we call a citizen portal so a citizen portal is like a one-stop place that you can request all kind of um government services for uh within the cities more even more is like um instead of like they're building out a government like a lotus board that you can see everything from the government they actually do the things in another way so they just reverse thing around so they just like when you log into this portal and then because like they already know uh, your identity so the government can actually push something that really really personal to you and actually let you know what kind of services that you are legible or you are entitled to to actually enjoy so this kind of thing is like for example right if me as a um I say, I don't know, like a 40 years old male, unmarried, like a single guy, and then log into the city, I won't be able to see like a, uh, like a uh, middle school applications form because like the government actually think like, oh, I'm not eligible to retake my high school in the city, or given my age. So those will be kind of like the things that we actually build, our service now can actually build for um, the citizens to actually make their life much more easier. Another one that if you actually jump to um on jump on the plane and then wait another nine hours uh, to the west, then you can actually jump over to uh Los Angeles, right? So Los Angeles, as you as you always know, um US was kind of like uh really bad uh over the past two years about the COVID, right? Um, I'm not talking about why we are the worst country, which I'm actually saying in uh it is the worst in in um. COVID testing, but I mean, matter of fact, it's like we all suffering uh, COVID in the US, right? So one of the things is always, we always complain about our own US government is like, they are not respons responding fast enough to actually letting people to actually take the vaccine and also do the testing and everything, right? And also, uh, we also suffering, many people suffering um, their income as well during the 2019 and 2020 right so what we actually helping our um our last uh la governments to do that is like we actually using service now and they only took us like 60 days to actually stand up a whole um brand new pandemic systems that actually letting people to actually schedule actually see the result keeping track of our if a panel doctor or like their uh, relative if they have uh, diagnosis as a COVID and then what even more is like again coming back to our human touch right so COVID testing the appointment system is very easy simple but if you think about from a human perspective right if I being being like diagnosis as a COVID what do I need on the next step 
right? I'm not going to like take all those paper and then go home and say, oh, I feel like I'm suffering so much and now I'm so poor, I need to have my own medicine as well. So I need to take the paper to another department and then get more funding, right? So our platform is actually not only we do the COVID appointment systems, but we have follow-up actions. So if you're being, unfortunately, if you're being diagnosed as a COVID, then not only they will notify you, but they will also send you to some kind of like a funding system. One of the funding that we can uh, give it to our citizen here is the branch receive um, systems. So basically they actually relieve your rent for uh, 18 months actually so, so that you don't have to worry about you being kicked out from your own apartments. So basically some kind of things that we always think about uh, one step further is how we can utilize service now to build relationship between uh, between the governments and the citizens. And actually this is one of the very cool things that I think you guys should actually consider um, and think about in your ideas as well. Okay, so now we have been like Japan, US, and now taking another uh, 13 hour flight when we actually back to Hong Kong. So one of our key uh, home base here, right? So in Hong Kong, uh, we have a couple different um, service now things that we have been doing in the smart city. And one of the things that you will always see is uh, the airport communities. So one interesting fun fact is like, um, there is like 70,000 people working on the airport island. So it's not just like, even though like airport community, um, I mean, airport are 40, they only have 3,000 employees, but there's actually 70,000 people working in, within the airport every single day. So how do we actually um, connect them together with the airport of 40? So we think about something called um, the airport community connect. So what we call is like, so as the airport, as the airline operators, so think about if I make Cafe Pacific um, airline, what if I'm going to change my logo to uh, the green one to, to a blue logo, right? So imagine how many steps that they need to go through within the airport so that they can, they can update their logos on every single where, I, 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 on all the places that they have logo in. So service are actually giving out a kind of like a complex workflow to actually helping out the airport authority to actually talk to their uh, company like an airline to actually make this kind of update. So whenever they have a new names, they have a new uh, employees, even though like their new counter set up, they can actually using service now to actually communicate with the airport uh, authorities. And what even more is like by using this kind of data, so airport community actually using them to actually build something called uh, the digital twins. So what digital twins is about is like, you and I may be young enough to have something called a simulations, like a SimCity 2000 and all, whatever SimCity games that you actually play around, right? I am telling you that in Hong Kong airport, right? They have already built something similar to SimCity in their systems. So every single airplane, every single, um, even though like a, a, a cart, uh, they're moving within the airport, they can actually see it in their systems in real time, of course, 3D uh, purposes. So this kind of like a cool digital twins cannot be done without a proper data fitting. So one of the data fitting, of course, we can use the IoT sensor to fit in some kind of like a, uh, environmental data in. But if you talk about like a people movement, if you're talking about the uh, actual services movement, those are the things that we actually get it from service now. And then those kind of data is actually fitting in into a bigger pictures so that we can help and actually giving our citizen the, uh, a better airport experience. And ultimately, if you guys can see, I mean, even though we have been like, uh, getting like a campaign on our Hong Kong airport is actually worse than uh, the Singapore or even like a Seoul um, airport. But give them some time, right? If you actually, um, this kind of service now, digital twin system, will actually, actually fundamentally changing the way how uh, airport authority going to work. And then you will 
I mean, start after the pandemic, right? After the uplift, you guys will actually see um, the new airport coming in in the future. So I can't disclose too much, but yeah, take some time. You guys will know it. All right. So um, the next one, um, I remember like uh, Alan in the opening actually talk about uh, Deloitte is not just a company who only make money from uh, from, <laughs> from 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 Hong Kong, right? So we're not just uh, doing service our project for profit only, right? So we always want to be like giving impact to these communities. So one of the way that we're trying to giving back our com to the community is we are helping out one of the biggest like a science park in the world, uh, in in Hong Kong to actually supporting their incubation uh process. So basically. Um, nowadays, you can all, if you are like a new startup company, you always can actually do a, a pie, a incubation program uh, in Science Park, right? And then they will actually give you funding, they will give you office spaces, and they will also giving you uh, different kind of support uh, in terms of um, the technology support, guidance, coaching, everything to actually help you to, um, to actually help you success in your startup, right? So all kind of things are actually supporting by one of the uh, systems and actually the advisory on things, right? So Deloitte and ServiceNow actually work together to actually helping um, Science Park to actually lay out the new incubation program. And over the years, over the past five years, we actually successfully like funding over a hundred million dollars out. And then um, there's couple of it is also like a unicorn company that is starting off from Hong Kong as well. So if you look at um, Science Park and then of course the next step we are also doing something in Cyberport as well but if you look at those two things uh, all those startup basically they at some degree they have already using uh, our own service our product in order to get the whole um, funding process as well. So without further delay, I think the last one I also share with you, like the size uh, cyber port, as I said, right? So I want to be like uh, giving more time to you guys as an open forum and um, how we can actually help you and how I can like, provide you some guidance on um, help you to shape out your own ideas. Uh, I will give the forum to you guys. So raise your hands if you want. If you have questions, then yeah, feel free to raise out your, your, your questions, concerns. Anyone? All right, guys, if you have any question, you have access to the reactions uh, on the bottom of your Zoom call, or you can just type them directly in the chat. Um, meanwhile, ah, we have some questions from Matthew Kong. Uh, Matthew Kong, is legacy system and infrastructures holding back the development of smart city? So it's a smart city specific question. Um, I would say, uh, especially in Hong Kong, I would say, right, so the legal system and also, uh, I wouldn't think, so, I, I don't think so, actually, to be honest. So one of the reasons why uh, people think about like the legacy system or like a legal um, framework doesn't help on smart city, so that may not be the case. So be, the only reason you always see that, right, in most of the smart cities, like, um, in, in LA, right, in US. I mean, in US, we have the, the worst uh, legal system, right, being challenged uh, on, on like, not picking up as uh, the latest technology as well. So there has to be a way to actually make your system work within the legal framework, right? Legal framework is kind of like a elephant moving so slow. So our system, our ideas, the smart city things, ideas is always like working on behalf and within the legal framework that we can craft out and we can change the way how we work in order to make it work within uh, the legal communications. So that is actually up until our, our creativities. So that's why I don't think, uh, the only thing that we're holding up the creativities, um, the holding up the smart city is the innovation and creativities, I would think, yeah. All right. Matthew, uh, you good with that? <laughs> I think, uh, 
yeah it makes it makes a lot of sense uh, in a in a practical sense that uh, legal systems they're just not very flexible but yeah. uh, okay Matthew is happy do we have any other questions here meanwhile uh, you guys think I'll just do uh, I'll just use the occasion to do a couple of announcements um, as you know service now and Deloitte as are some of our core sponsors and as such we have some prizes uh, for the winning teams who are who hinge on you using the service now technology so as you've seen it's very viable it's already been implemented for uh, big projects and it's scalable um, it's also a platform on which you have a lot of resources to learn if you need any information about that we have the service now and service now help desk uh, text channels on the discord that you, you can check out and uh, you know the more like it's a small decision of where to implement your application that uh, actually opens more doors in terms of uh, internships and in terms of the prizes you can receive during the competition so we strongly encourage you to uh, at least consider it as one of your options. Um, for there's also the mentorship sessions that are closing uh, tomorrow for the week one. Uh, if you want to have mentorship before the proposal project submission, now is the right time to sign up since uh, tomorrow is the last day where we'll actually have mentorship mentorship sessions in this week. And we have a question from Pranay. If I was to use ServiceNow for front end, is it mainly web based or could I make a mobile app using ServiceNow? All right. So, ServiceNow uh, also providing a native mobile applications. So, you don't have to like build a whole mobile applications. Basically, you can only you need to build once, then they can use it in uh, their web based, uh, web front end, as well as their mobile app as well. That's an, also another good reason to use service now is that if you're doing all the implementation from scratch, it's going to take you a lot of time to go over uh, some of the things, some of the very basic functionalities and things like this. Well, with service now, you can not only include more people in the development because it's uh, uh, where where would I find the resources for it, my prene? What is it called? So service now. If you guys want to know more about the service now. There is a website called DOCS, so docs dot servicenow.com. So you can find out all kind of resources okay. about ServiceNow. I'm gonna put okay. it in the chat as well, so just in case. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's perfect. Right. Yeah. As I was saying, the, because we have because our timeline is fairly short. I mean, it's long enough that you should have the time to pick up some skills for development on service now. But because it's very it's fairly short, um, having some of the work uh, cut out for you by the platform uh, can actually make a big difference in what the final product is going to look like. So, yeah. Again, consider it. Do we have any of the questions? Mm. I all right. Yeah, cool. I think it's all right. Do you have uh, any things you would like to? Any other things to say? No, I think like uh, the only thing I, I mean, I will say something like um, imagine uh, what happened after 20 years. That will be the most, I mean, sustainability uh, is going to be the best idea in this smart city. Again, smart city is all about people, uh, people experience sustainability. Uh, sustainability not only from an environmental perspective but also from a financial sustainability perspective so those will be the things that will actually help you to success in our ideas and also uh, think about like a cost over so service now is not the only solutions that you should pick uh, although I'm going to be murdered after this call but yes so you guys should 
think about how you can use a couple of different technologies, branding, in order to help um, your solutions. So one of the things I always talk about is how, think about how you can use a uh, blockchain actually mixed with ServiceNow and then put it in your ideas. It will be a much more powerful uh, platforms to actually help you out for a smart cities. Perfect. So on those words of wisdom, then, um, except if uh, any of the others uh, want to add anything to it, I think we'll be uh, we'll be finishing the session. Again, uh, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you, Benny, for your explanations. Um, we have another, we have a service now a service now workshop coming up on Thursday at uh, 5 p.m. If I'm uh, right, uh, if you guys want to get more information about the platform, you can uh, join that workshop too. Um, but until then, thank you all very much for coming, and uh, thank you very much for Deloitte and Service Now again for sponsoring the events and uh, to those workshops. Great. Hopefully, see everyone. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye.